recording? Just hit the video. Huh? Just regular, the regular screen. Just hit the regular screen. Okay. So first, I'm going to start with epilepsy. And um, epilepsy, I know you guys haven't talked too much about it in neuro yet, but the general idea of epilepsy is just like too much excitation. So let's see, it's basically too much excitation. Um, you're basically getting all these activities all over your cortex. And that's why you're having all these seizures. Um, and I'm going to go into a little bit more about the different types of seizures and what medications to use for them. But the general idea is just too much excitation or too little inhibition. So these are going to be um, the targets of most of the therapy. So if it's too much excitation, um, what are some of the ways that you can like kind of decrease that excitation. Sodium channel, so that would just be, you know, like stopping the action potentials from propagating too much. So you can um, block sodium channels, or you can also increase the inhibitory stuff, right? So like increase GABA or the receptors. And um, you can also use some type of glutamate modulator. And then the last one would be to kind of um, inhibit the calcium channels. So these are the four main ways that we try to target in terms of epilepsy. And the main one is definitely the blocking sodium channels. There's a lot of drugs um, doing this. And then the last one is inhibit calcium channel. Okay, so with these in mind, with blocking the sodium channels, um, a lot of the main drugs, the most important one is probably phenytoin. That one blocks the sodium channel. So an example of a sodium channel blocker would be like phenytoin. And what you need to remember for phenytoin is that it's used very frequently and it's one of the very few drugs that's zero order elimination. So that's like ethanol, right? So you want to be really careful with um, zero order. Okay, so you want to be really careful with overdosing too much phenytoin. Okay, so these are the pretty much the basic uh, ways that we want to target epilepsy. And now I'm going to go over the different types of epilepsy. Oh, no. okay. okay, so I'm going to go over like there's basically four scenarios to epilepsy that you would need to know about. So first, um, the one that we commonly think about when we think about epilepsy is like, you know, someone kind of falls down and they're like twitching all over. So first of all, that one is like a generalized seizure. So there's a generalized. And by generalized, what we mean is basically all over your brain, it's affected. So everywhere in the brain, there's all these like too much excitation, overall too much activity everywhere in the brain. And the one that you commonly think of, someone falls over, twitching all over the place, that's the um, tonic-clonic. Tonic-clonic. So that's the classic picture of seizure that you think of. Okay. And then there's another form of generalized seizure. So this is also, you know, every part of the brain being affected. But this one shows up very differently. It's basically an absence seizure. So people would just like kind of stare off into space looking like they're just completely offline. So that's the absence seizure. And then there's also the case where someone might have some kind of twitching, but maybe it's just the arm. So this is not general. This is only one part of the brain. So that's called focal. 
or people call partial seizure. Okay, so these are the seizure types. And then the last category that you would need to know the treatment for would be while someone is having the seizure. So for the first three, I'm talking about like maybe drugs to prevent these from happening. Okay, so to prevent these, preventions. Prevention, okay. And then over here is like as they're having the seizure, there's a status. So status, um, the old definition is you're basically having a seizure for a really long time. It used to be 30 minutes, now it's moved down to five minutes. So if you're having these seizures continuously for five minutes, so that's um, greater than five minutes of the actual seizure activity. So these are the four scenarios where you would need to know the medications for. And I'm going to, so in terms of knowing what drugs to use, um, I would know basically the first line of treatment. So what are the main drugs that you have to use for these conditions? And then the second line drugs, you don't necessarily need to know too much about them other than you know what kind of mechanisms that they're targeting. I think that's, um, if you go with that general idea, I think you're okay for most people. Yes? Okay, so the question is, you want to know whether you need to know whether it's metabolized by a certain... Yeah. Okay, so a lot of the seizure medications, they're cytochrome P450 inducers or inhibitors. And that is very important because if they're taking one of these drugs and they might also be taking something else, then you will worry whether it's going to affect the metabolism of another drug. So that part is important. Um, as, as for the specific subtypes of cytochrome P450, I mean, it would be nice to know if you can really remember, but I think for now, if you really don't have that much space in your brain, you really need to know whether it's overall an inducer or inhibitor. That's more important to know than you know the subtypes. So remember that part first, and then if you have the time or the leisure, then go back. Yeah. I get a lot of questions. I've only seen one question that ever asked like a specific like maybe more or whatever. I don't think it's high yield. It's not, uh, yeah, I, I it's not very high yield. But you do need to know that they're overall like an inducer or inhibitor. And if it's something that affecting cytochrome 3A4, yeah, 3A4 is like the main one. So that's pretty important. But just know the general gist that whether it's an inhibitor or a um, inducer of cytochrome P450. Yeah, that part is important. Okay. So I'm going to go over um, what you will use in these scenarios. So the generalized seizure and basically the tonic-clonic seizure, there's, there's four drugs that people mainly use. So there's the phenytoin. And what you need to remember for this one is that we already talked about this is zero order, order elimination. That's very important. And there's also carbamazepine, valproic acid. So I'm writing these four down because they actually do repeat as the first line of treatment for um, other types too. And then phenobarbital. Barbital. Okay, so these set of four drugs, they're used um, also for this one. So let me just rearrange this. Oh, can you get this? Oh, I don't know what's happening. No. Okay, I think I'm just gonna do this. I think the moving of it didn't quite work out. Okay, so 
these are the same four that you use here as well for the focal seizures. So these are the first line of treatment. And what you need to know is phenytoin is zero order. And there's other, um, and it also gives you gingival hypoplasia. So I'll give you a chart that would tell you all these treatments, but just remember that these are the first order and these are used for generalized seizures and for partial seizures. And for absent seizures, okay, so if you, if you recall, most of these are targeting sodium channels, a lot of them, Walker. Um, yeah, except for the phenobarbital is for um, the GABA. And the same thing for focal seizures. But when you go over to the generalized seizures, for some reason, um, the first line of treatment is actually to inhibit calcium channel. So there's two main ones that would inhibit calcium channel. One of them is valproic acid. And then the other one is the ethosuximide. Okay. And that's um, the main treatment for these. And for status epilepticus, so that's like when you're actually having the seizure. This is not really prevention. You're already having the seizure and it's lasting more than a couple minutes, then you want to use um, diazepam or lorazepam. And these are benzodiazepines. Okay, and so for now, remember these uh, first line of treatment for these seizure disorders, and remember which one will do which one of these, which one has which mechanism. So I'll give you a chart for that, but just keep these in mind and think about why these are useful treatments. So this is the, this is as far as you, I really wanna point out right now for the seizures. Um, a lot of it is just remembering the important side effects for these medications. Okay, so I'm going to do another page. So now I'm going to talk about, let me, let me stop this first. Blue button, right? 